Welcome back, and this is part three in the video series of partial fractions. And this is uh, when we have repeated factors on the denominators. So if we look over to the left here, we can see that we have a factor, but it is squared. It's also the same here. We have a factor that is squared. So what will happen is we'll need to use a slightly different approach that we did to in type one and type two. And you can check out those videos in the description or click the link above. Let's dive in. Okay, as mentioned just in the introduction, this was type one and this was found in video one when we had a linear factor on the denominator. So we can see here, we would need to use this format. But type two was when we had quadratic factors in this format here, we can see a quadratic factor here, which is not uh, irreducible. So we couldn't uh, factorize that up into linear factors. Therefore we would use this form. But in this video, we're gonna focus on type three, which is a repeated factor. So we have one factor, but it is squared. Okay, so it's the same factor twice and we all need to to use a slightly different format for that and that's what these next two examples will be going through. Question one, express as a sum of partial fractions. This following quotient, so what we'll do is let's just take a closer look at this here. What is the denominator? What well, is x times x times x plus one. So what I want you to think of this as being, let's say we had one linear factor here and then we have one factor but it is repeated twice. This is why we have to use a slightly different format. So what we'll do is we'll go up here and we're going to write down a over. Now this first one is always going to be the singular um, linear factor. So that will be the x plus one. So let's just write that down now, x plus one plus b over. And you can see by this setup here that we have one of the factors and then that same factor squared. So that will be the repeated root or the repeated factor, sorry. So that will be x. And then what we'll do is we'll have the same value, but squared, right? So this is the setup that we need for this style of question. So now what we'll do is we are going to multiply everything through by the denominator like we did in type one and type two. We're gonna multiply everything through by this. So that would leave us with five x squared minus three is equal to, now we should be used to this now, so this is a and the x plus one will cancel, so this is ax squared plus b, and now the, one of the x's will cancel, leaving us with this value, and c and the x squared will cancel, leaving us with x plus one. Okay, and this is the point where we choose a substitution, so I'm gonna say let x equal zero, because if we let x equal zero, this term is gonna go to zero, so is this term. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's substitute zero into this. So we're going to get negative three is equal to zero plus zero. And we put in zero there, so that's C, right? So we can say that C is equal to minus three. So that's a very easy result there. Now let's go ahead and do this all over again, okay, by plugging in a different value. So this time I'm going to make the substitution X is equal to negative one one, right? So I'll just write that down, minus one. The reason being is when x is equal to minus one, this term will disappear, and so will this term. So doing that now, so that's going to be two is equal to minus one squared times a, which should be a, and the other two terms are zero. So that's great, so we've got our a term. So that's um, what we did basically in type two. Okay, in order to find the last value, which is uh, b, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna equate coefficients. So I'm just gonna look very carefully that the coefficient of the x squared term is five. And the x squared terms on the right-hand side are ax squared and bx squared, right? We can see it here. So therefore then, uh, we can make this statement that the five must be equal to a plus b because those are the x squared coefficients. So let's say that was x squared and this is x squared. Okay, these values must equal. So the five and the a plus b must equal. And we've just got this statement here. So if a is two, then b must be equal to three. And that is our value for b. And so that equating coefficients is a great uh, way of finding the last one. So what we'll do is we're just going to write up the final uh, expression here. So we have, uh, let's just do that now. We have um, two over x plus one plus three over x minus three over x squared. And that is the end of the first question. 
Question two. So express as a sum of partial fractions this following quotient here. So we can see again that we have one linear root, then a second root squared. So in other words, a repeated root. So what we'll do now is we will write a over the singular linear root, which is this value, plus b over the other root, but not squared, plus c over the other root, but this time squared, right? And we're going to do the same thing as what we did on question one, where we will multiply everything by this denominator. So if we do that, we'll have x plus one is equal x minus 1. So we'll do what we've done in every other question is that we're going to make a substitution. x is equal to 1, right? So making that substitution would mean that this term here will go to 0. So this whole expression will go to 0. Uh, this will also go to 0. So let's do that now. So we'll have 2, this is the left hand side, right, is equal to a and 1 minus 2 is minus 1 squared. So that's be times 1. And that's it. So we have a value for a very, very quickly. Now let's go ahead and make another substitution. What about when we plug in x is equal to 2? The left hand side will become 3. And this expression will go to 0. And this expression will go to 0, leaving us with just c. So therefore, we have managed to get c. Now, the third one is always the more tricky one to find. What we're going to do is we are going to equate coefficients again. Right, so usually the x squared term is always the easiest one to look for. So I'm just going to circle this now, and hopefully you can see that this is a, and when we expand that bracket, we're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Right, so the coefficient of the x squared term would just be a. Now, I just want you to have a look at this here as well, this b term, that when we time those together, we would get x squared minus 2x minus 1x, so that would be minus 3x plus 2. So the coefficient of the x squared term would be actually bx squared. So again, we have this situation where on the left-hand side, so I'll just put LHS for the left-hand side, let's have a look up here, we do not have an x squared term. So in other words, the coefficient of the x squared is 0, right? But on the right-hand side of this expression, as I have just been through, and we'll just say one more time, the coefficient of x squared, it, there is an a, and there is a b times x squared. So therefore then, this coefficient here would be a plus b. And we're just simply looking for the coefficients of x squared here. So if we already know that a is 2, 0 equals 2 plus b, so therefore b equals minus 2. And that's our final term. So what we'll do is we will rewrite this expression. Sorry, uh, let's section this off so we can see a little bit clearer. Uh, 2 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x minus 2 squared. And there is our result for question 2. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.